Well, hello, everybody, all my in-demand listeners. Uh, I have a special guest for you. And she, her name is Jana Osofsky, and she is going to be teaching us all about Pinterest. She's actually a marketing expert and Pinterest specialist for online coaches, course creators, and service providers. She got her start back in, uh, in the online world back in 2016 as a virtual assistant, and that was something that I didn't know about my friend. Mm -hmm. Upon discovering that a client of hers was leveraging Pinterest to get leads and sell her services, Jana went all in on this platform, and she has since developed a specialization in Pinterest marketing for lead generation, and Lord knows all of us online business people need lead generation. So now she helps her clients and students automate, automate list growth so that they can automate a steady stream of targeted leads for their courses, their programs, and set themselves up for a long-term business success. And yes, she does all of that with Pinterest. She is on a mission to spread the word, which is when set up properly, Pinterest can attract your soulmate clients with a small investment of time each month. I don't know about you guys, but I am so into this conversation. <laughs> Jana, thank you and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That was a great introduction. So oh, fun. You're welcome. I am available to take me to any places that you need to be introduced. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you're my wing woman. <laughs> so let's just kind of like start with the basics. Like, where were you before 2016? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So I actually... I, I worked in marketing and um, human resources, actually, um, right out of school, and then a little bit in marketing. Um, when I moved from Boston to Florida in uh, probably like 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I decided not to go back into the corporate human resources arena that I was in. And um, I ended up actually joining, um, not joining, but like starting to support my family's business for a little bit while, a little while here in South Florida. And I took on a marketing role. So I started using my marketing degree again at that point and, you know, was really enjoying it um, and had a couple of other clients because I was like kind of in a, a client relationship with like my mom, believe it or not, who was like my client because I was doing marketing for her business, mm -hmm. um, took on a couple of other clients and had a really, um, you know, significant like content marketing business for some local businesses here. But it was very like location tied. Like I had to go to offices and do sales presentations and things like that as, as part of that. And at a certain point in my life, um, back in 2016, um, I was getting remarried. I wanted more location independence mm -hmm. and heard about, you know, this idea of being able to work online and being able to do everything that you need to do online from wherever and whenever, you know, if you were to write your own ticket. Um, so I decided I wanted to be in that world and the most, um, the, the way that I felt made sense um, was to jump in as a virtual assistant and just support people in doing things that I thought I might want to help them with. Of course, that always changes right from the beginning when you start. Um, and so I did that and was doing content marketing because, of course, I have this marketing background. Um, long story short, one of my first clients in the online space is a, a course creator and a branding specialist and a coach as well. And, um, I discovered at that point, you know, that's the, that's the person you were talking about in my little introduction, uh, phrase there that she was, um, just like killing it on Pinterest. She was making money in her business because of her Pinterest marketing. And I was like, what? So as soon as I, you know, I, I picked my jaw up off the floor, I always say first, um, and then double check to make sure what I was seeing was what I thought I was seeing. And indeed, you know, all of her leads, um, the vast majority of her website traffic, um, almost all of her lead magnet opt-ins were all, you know, coming from this Pinterest marketing machine that she had built. So I learned all about it. Like you said, uh, went all in, took a couple of classes, took a, or courses, um, also took on other clients so I could get kind of a diverse diversity of, you know, clients and see different profiles. And then, yeah, at some point decided really just to go all in. And, and since then I've, I've had dozens and dozens of, um, coaches, course creators, service providers that I've have hired me to set up their profiles strategically, um, I also have uh, on my team someone who does management, and I also um, have uh, created a course to teach my methods to people who might not want to or be in a position to work with me one-to-one, -one, but would like to learn um, how I'm doing it for coaches, course creators, service providers in particular. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of like the story, where I was, how I got to where I am now, 
And um, yeah, and you know, you mentioned you weren't, you didn't know I started as a VA. I think if anyone's considering working online, regardless of whether or not you are really accomplished or, you know, are coming from another industry where you're, you have lots of experience, I think if you believe in working hard and paying your dues and learning by doing, I think starting as a virtual assistant is a great way to, to go. So. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. I've never heard anybody say that. And I totally forgot you were from Boston. Yeah, uh, I know. We, we have a lot in common. <laughs> you, yes, you and yeah. I do have a lot in common. Yep. Um, so for anybody, if you're watching this um, over on YouTube or you're listening to this on the podcast, you are going to want to grab some pen and paper for this one or just <laughs> save the episode. Because um, I know that Jana's going to dive deep into like some of her her um, processes and opinions and like really like how to strategically <laughs> use Pinterest that it really just needs to be a part of your marketing plan. Mm. And one of the things that I love about it is it's, I, and I know that you and I have talked about this, it's really like a one and done. Yeah. It's like once you do it, that pin is still alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Like the, the, the half-life or the shelf life, you know, of a Pinterest pin is like something like 16,000 times longer than, you know, some of the social posts. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that number is amazing, but it, it really, it makes sense if you think about it. Um, if you shift your thought process and realize that Pinterest is actually a search and discovery engine and it's a lot more like YouTube and even Google, um, than it is like Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, and once people kind of make that shift and they get it and it clicks, then it, they start to understand how Pinterest marketing works and why you'd want to be there and what the benefits of it are. And it is very low maintenance compared to social media. So for I, sure. I love that. Cause I'm all personally, I'm all about efficiency and things yeah. that are low maintenance. Yeah. And I kind of like have this uh, imagery of, you know, if you don't do Pinterest, you can either be like the hamster on the hamster wheel, no. you know, or you can just kind of like be the laid back hamster and watch <laughs> the one that's on the hamster wheel. <laughs> Yeah. And I, you know, I think Pinterest fits into the big picture in that way, in the sense that I think that there are kind of like two different models out there. And obviously this is a, probably a gross oversimplification, but I see kind of people falling into two categories. You're either um, kind of in more of the masculine where you're um, out looking for clients, finding clients, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, um, you know, me sending direct messages, being very, you know, what people call organic about going after your leads. Um, and then the other sort of camp that I sometimes see um, is this attraction marketing camp. And that's the one I personally am in. And again, I don't think that one is better than the other. I just know for me, I want to be an attraction marketer. I want to have my system set up and have people um, be attracted to me based on what they know I can help with and my content and things like that. And I want to have systems in place so that when they are attracted to me, they know what to do. They know what the next steps are. Uh, Pinterest is really uh, serves people in that second camp best because it's all about bringing new people, um, attracting new people to, you know, your marketing systems. Um, so yeah, I don't, I just got it off on a little tangent, but that's, I kind of see no, no, no. Kind of like <laughs> the, du <laughs> the duality there. And I think it's an interesting one. I'm always kind of observing that duality out there in our little coaching world. <laughs> and I don't think I've heard anybody say attraction marketing, but mm -hmm. you know, like in just like listening to you, that's exactly what Pinterest is. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, do you either want to go out there and go um, try to get the leads or do you want them to just come to you naturally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always think that once you get a certain level of clarity in your business about who you serve and how you help them and the results and things like that, you really need, you really just need, you need something to sell that you're very clear on. You know, you need to have a way for people to pay you, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and then you really just need like a system that's going to nurture them and a system that's going to bring new people into your system, into your, you know, into your uh, world. So um, Pinterest, a lot of people, they, they, when they first think about Pinterest, they think of it like Instagram because it's visually beautiful um, or like Facebook and they think, okay, well, how can I nurture people on Pinterest and get them to build a relationship with me and build that like know and trust. And the thing is, is that's totally the wrong question. And so um, Pinterest is all, really nurturing isn't what Pinterest is about, at least not right now. Um, it is about attracting new people to your content and new people who wouldn't have seen it otherwise because it's a search engine. So it's about people who are already searching for the things that you help with and the things that you teach in your content, the things that you offer through your paid offers and your free offers. Mm -hmm. 
about those people searching for those things and finding you when they search. So in that way, again, it's a lot more like Google. And if you can think about it more like that, you can start to understand that that's the role that Pinterest marketing plays in your marketing system. It's bringing new people and attracting new people who otherwise never would have found you, but we're already looking for you, which is the powerful part. <laughs> you know. So you bring up something interesting and I heard you mention this before about keywords. So, and I know that keywords are like critical with Google and okay. Pinterest. So can you use the same keywords on Google that you would in Pinterest? Yeah, um, that's a really good question. And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> um, <laughs> on one hand, it's a great place to start. So if like, if I have a client or a student of my course who already has a list that they know they've researched um, for their uh, Google um, search engine marketing, uh, SEO, and by the way, this same thing could be true for YouTube. So if, you, if you've mm -hmm. done some YouTube research, you know, that's another great um, place to start. However, the ecosystems, if you will, are uh, ex uh, exclusive to each other, right? I mean, or they're not the same. <laughs> they're separate. So I can see that. Right. So you do have to do some Pinterest uh, specific keyword research in order to find out what people are searching for on Pinterest. And although Pinterest is vast, um, there are like, I think it's like 8 billion ideas a day or something crazy like that that are, po that are posted wow. there and uh, 400 million um, active monthly users now. It's growing really, really fast, by the way. Um, it's, even though it is very big, it's not as big as Google, <laughs> right? Because Google is like the whole internet. Um, and the, the intention behind searching on Pinterest is a little bit different than it is on Google. So for all of those reasons, um, you could take that list that you have and you could start with that, but you want to use that as a jumping off point and still do some specific keyword research that's specific to the Pinterest ecosystem. And are the <clears throat> keywords different just because the the people on Google are different than the people on Pinterest. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. like those, as you mentioned, like, you know, it's the yes and the no answer mm -hmm. um, being yeah. a great place to start from Google so that you can get, you would actually get a tr um, searches so that we can get pull people into Pinterest, but then right. to be like very strategic about your keywords over in Pinterest based yeah. on like your user. Yeah, exactly. So there's a couple things going on there. One of them is that there are, there like sometimes, like I just worked with a client recently who um, helps women with um, overcoming uh, trauma from a past relationship so that they can have more joy and um, healthy love in their current healthy relationship. And ho hopefully I can come up with the example for this because I didn't prepare it, but there was something, there were several things that she was looking to rank for on Google that were just too specific um, to be able to rank for on Pinterest in this, not rank for, but too specific to go all in on, on Pinterest because Pinterest is a smaller ecosystem. So we kind of had to back up and say, okay, this is what you um, were trying to rank for on Google because on Google, there's also this idea of trying to rank for keywords that you reasonably can um, based on search volume but the search volume is exactly what's different on Pinterest than on Google because the search volume on Google is because it's so vast is much more of an issue over on Pinterest. Um, I feel like I'm getting in the weeds here over on Pinterest. You just, you can be more general and have a better chance of ranking and getting discovered by people than you could over on Google. Um, kind of coming back to like the Google is the ocean mm -hmm. and Pinterest is that's a great, great analogy. That's a great analogy. Exactly. So like for her, for instance, you know, if she were to try to rank on Google for trauma processing, she might not stand a chance because there's just so much search volume and there are other big players that are already ranking. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if she's going to, you know, work for four years to try to rank for that and end up on page 22 of Google, that might not be worth her doing. But over on Pinterest, um, that actually absolutely was a phrase that we worked into her keyword plan for Pinterest because it's a smaller ecosystem and that is uh, general enough, but specific enough so that it's going to attract the right people to her Pinterest profile. Nice. Yeah. That's really technical. I hope you don't mind. Like, <laughs> we're getting, you're, we're getting a little nerdy here. Smart we girls are getting, getting a little nerdy. So let's, get, let's kind of go basic then. Um, let's say either somebody's not present on on a Pinterest or mm -hmm. they are, but they're not active. Like what are three mm -hmm. things um, that you would say, here's what you got to do, whether yeah. that's, that's the behind the scenes, like here's how you prepare to get onto Pinterest mm -hmm. or like, what do people need to 
need to have in place in order to, uh, to basically leverage Pinterest? Yeah. Um, so for me, it really comes down to, th it is three things, um, which kind of coincide with my framework. So the first one is the keywords. Um, so you want to be clear about who it is that you want to be in front of on Pinterest, which sounds easy, but sometimes it takes a little bit of intentional thought, right? Into thinking, okay, exactly who is this woman that I want to get in front of on Pinterest? What is she searching for around the things I teach about? And then researching those and developing a keyword plan. So that's going to be the first thing. The second thing is going to be to nail your visuals. You really want to make sure that your Pinterest pins themselves, the visuals are going to do two things. You want them to stop the scroll because there's, there's a scroll going on just like in any, you know, other microcosm in our world, right? Everyone's attention is all over the place. And um, think about if you're a Pinterest user, you know, you're scrolling through something needs to grab your attention and there are certain techniques you can use to do that. Um, and then the second thing your pin needs to do is to let them know they're in the right place and incent them to click through to your content because you want them to come off Pinterest and get over to your website or to your content. So um, that is really, those are the two first pieces would be to really nail your keyword plan because nothing else works without it. <laughs> and then to nail your visuals because you need to catch people's attention and get them to do what you want them to do. And that's what the visuals are there to do. And then the third thing is to have like a, um, to plan out a workflow that you can easily do every month. Um, so that you can, and I, the workflow I teach is once per month, you sit down, you do all your Pinterest things, and then you set it and you forget it until the next now, month. I'm just going to interrupt you there because that just blows my mind. It's good. It's a good. One, <laughs> a once a month, because, you know, like, yeah. I, like I said in the beginning, I'm all about efficiency and repurposing. So when I was actually also on your blog, uh, oh. reading about that also about, cool. you know, like, it's just uh, like, here's what you can do with just like, like a small amount of time and seriously yeah. small amount of time once a month and just set everything mm -hmm. up. Yeah, exactly. And I always encourage people to do it that way because for my people, coaches, course creators, service providers, we, you know, Pinterest needs to be something that you fit into your marketing plan and it needs to be sustainable for you because it's not a fast thing, which we could talk about, but you need to be able to be consistent about it every month. And the only way for that is that that's going to work when you have clients to take care of and other marketing channels to deal with. And, you know, not to mention like, you know, your life, right? Yeah. Um, the only way that's going to happen is if you have a small period of time and you know exactly what you're going to do and you have a checklist of things to do and you go through and you hit, take care of them and do them and set it and forget it till the next month. So that's the approach that I teach. And it's really important so that you'll be able to get, you know, put the work in now and reap the rewards. Otherwise you'll abandon it because it'll be, you know, it'll be too time consuming or whatever. Right. So, so I'd say those are the really the three things. It's the nailing the keyword plan, getting your visuals on point, um, and then having that easy workflow for yourself so that you know exactly what to do. Um, or you can develop a workflow and delegate it. It's very easy to delegate it once it's set up strategically too. Nice. And that blog article, that couple that I read, you know, was mm -hmm. all about like, you know, like templates, like over in mm -hmm. Canva and yep. yeah, just have all of this stuff like ready to go to duplicate. Yeah, exactly. Um, Having it ready and easy. It's got to be easy. Otherwise you're not going to do it. So, right. Mm -hmm. Um, why are keywords so mysterious? Oh, goodness. Well, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not sure. It is the part that vexes people. I will tell you. You're right. And I've never quite figured out if it's because it's boring to some people or mm -hmm. if it's because um, it requires a certain amount of clarity around who your ideal person is. And sometimes people get in their heads a little bit about that. I'm not really sure exactly why. To me, it's not mysterious. To me, I know how it works and I just have this ability to understand how to get into people's head and think about their search intent. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love doing this and why I love helping people with it. Because I, you know, when you're good at something, you tend to, you know, enjoy doing it typically. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I have designed things so that I can get people over that hump because it's the harder part for sure. Most people, when they want to talk to me about Pinterest, they want to talk to me about the graphics and how to create the graphics that are going to grab people's attention mm -hmm. and how to use Canva to create them and things like that. And I love that part too. Um, but yeah, the keywords are so important. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. What do you think? Why do you think keywords I, are mysterious? Well, I think there's that perfectionism that comes out in us and like, how can I find the perfect keywords you know, to attract. So I don't know, like, is it so much like, is it, are we putting so much pressure on ourselves? Mm, that could be, yeah, that's definitely interesting. And I, I mean, I would love to explore that more offline too, because maybe, I mean, that could be one of the reasons why my clients sometimes 
um, struggle with it. And maybe I'm putting pressure on them by saying, we have to get this right, <laughs> you know, because we do, <laughs> we, have, we have to get it right. But um, like with many things, there are many right ways to do things. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you know, there isn't really going to just be one perfect right set of keywords that are going to bring success. There's going to be, um, you know, you could do it several different ways and it would be, it would work. So, so here's just a, a thought that I, that just came to me, like, do keywords kind of come and go? Like what mm -hmm. worked once, yeah. like when I say once, like um, a set of keywords or a keyword phrase that worked two years ago might not be working now. Yeah. So is it something that you have to keep also just maybe get into the keyword habit? Yeah, I, um, I like to batch the keyword stuff. So when, we, when I work with a client um, and what I teach in my course is to create your keyword plan up front. And then I typically would say that you can refresh your keyword research maybe once a year or so. And then there may also be times where you might wanna create a new board or you're creating content about something and you don't have a board for it yet. So you wanna do a little keyword research. Um, the example that I sometimes use is like, if you're, say you are a coach and you work with moms of big families, like six kids or more. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I just actually heard of someone who specializes in working with mom. It's not on this topic, but moms who have six kids or more. I was like, why really? <laughs> but that just goes to show as an aside that like when you work online, you can get that specific about your niche because you can work with anyone all over the country and possibly the world. So anyway, if that person, she specialized, let's say in self-care for moms who have six or more kids. <laughs> And so all of her boards, when she creates her account in the beginning, strategically are, you know, about self-care and morning routines and evening routines and things having to do with self-care. And then maybe nine months into her Pinterest journey, she decides to create, uh, she writes a blog post about body image and how um, working on your own body image can make you a better role model for your children, you know. She might want to create a new board called body image or a new board um, called, you know, um, self worth or something like that because her blog posts fit more squarely on those. So she's not going out into left field and creating content about something that's not related to what she does, but she does want to have some more specific boards. So if that were the case, then she might want to do a little more keyword research then using the same methods that um, I taught her, you know, in the beginning, um, but with this new kind of angle on things, right? The body image angle to find out what people are searching for around body image. Or well, more specifically, what moms are searching for around body image, you know? Yeah. So it's like you're saying, like, she's not, she hasn't gone too far out on a tangent. Mm -hmm. It's very related to what she's, what mm -hmm. she's talking about. Grab people in with those new keywords to that mm -hmm. board. Right. Which will then hopefully bring them to her whole world. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, it's a little technical, but typically, like, when you, when you pin a pin, Pinterest is looking at the keywords in different places on the pin itself in the pin description and also on the board that you place it on. So that's where having boards that are properly keyworded and properly um, planned out, if you will, can yeah. be really helpful in number one, getting in front of people, more people, getting mm -hmm. your reach bigger. But then also number two, what I think is kind of more important is getting in front of people who are specific enough that they're your people, right? That they're yes. your, your moms, you know, your, your yeah. moms with the six kids. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what does somebody have to have like on their website? Cause the whole point of Pinterest is to mm -hmm. draw people into your world, whether that's mm -hmm. your opt-in again, your website, but like yeah. email nurture sequence. I mean, like what are some of the other yeah. things that you tell your clients? Like, here's what you either need or let's start working on these. Yeah. That's a great question. And that's where that attraction marketing model comes in. Um, and so I believe that if you are practicing attraction marketing, mm -hmm. that you have some kind of funnel in place. Now, I know some people love the word funnel and some people hate the word funnel. <laughs> I personally am neutral on it. Um, although I tend to, I guess, probably lean towards liking it, but. Um, and, I, and I totally get why some people don't like it. And yeah. what I've said to some of my private clients is look at it as a map. Like mm -hmm. you are literally just like, here's. Like here's step one, here's yeah. step two. You're just guiding people. It yeah. doesn't mean that they don't take a tangent. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Or that there aren't different paths that get them to there, to that end to goal. Yeah. Same place. Yep. yeah. I've had people also say like, well, let's not call it a funnel. Let's call it a customer journey. And I think that for some people that might be more palatable too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, exactly. Somehow or another, you have a funnel of some kind, um, and that could be a very simple funnel, and it could be a more complex funnel. Uh, so Pinterest 
role in your marketing is to bring people into your funnel. So you really have to answer the question, what are they going to do next? Once they discover you on Pinterest, you know, once that mom finds your body image pin um, and says, oh my gosh, yeah, I want to learn about body image to be a, uh, you know, to be a better role model for my daughters or my children. And she clicks through, what is she going to land on? So yeah, you, you know, you need to be creating some kind of content. So it could be a blog. People ask me all the time, do you need a blog for Pinterest? Um, it could be a podcast with show notes. It could be YouTube videos. Um, it, there needs to be a way for people to, um, cause remember, you have to remember too, that with Pinterest, the, one of the things we love about it is that it's often people who are finding you who've never met you before or don't even know right. about you. Right. They haven't, they're not already in your Facebook group. They haven't already followed you on Instagram. So you truly are a brand new stranger to them. Mm -hmm. So when they land on that piece of content that you want them to, or whatever that is, that's where your customer journey or your funnel takes over. So you're probably, you know, I'm not a funnel expert, although I feel sometimes like I've gotten to that point, but you're probably going to need a way to hook them in, right? Like a freebie or something so that you can get mm -hmm. there, have them not just get over to your website, but also raise their hand and say, you know, yes, I'm interested. Here's my email so that you can start to create that relationship with them where you can, you know, email them regularly. You could invite them in an email over to your Facebook group. You could reach out to them directly if that's part of the way that your funnel works, depending on what your offers are and what your model is. In some way or another, you'd like to be able to do that. Um, a newer strategy too, a lot of people are talking about this these days, is when someone lands on your blog uh, post or your uh, vlog with your embedded YouTube video or your podcast show notes, you can pixel them um, with your Facebook pixel, right? Mm -hmm. Or your Pinterest, your Pinterest um, tag or whatever platform you're retargeting them with um, and retarget them through ads too. So that's obviously like a advanced strategy, but to answer your question in a very long, uh, <laughs> drawn out way, I, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law always says to make a long story longer. And then she proceeds with her story. <laughs> um, I feel like that right now. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're going to need to create some content. So whether you love creating videos, whether you love creating blog posts, um, podcast episodes, there's going to need to be something that's going to be able to nurture them, hook them in, get them to raise their hand and say, here's my email. Let's stay in touch somehow. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just thinking like, oh yeah. And you could uh, even do that pixel without doing the ads quite yet. It's not like you have to oh, yeah. be like ready for Facebook ads with what right. you just said. I mean, you literally can be just pixeling people so that you're gathering all of that information right now. Right. And yeah. So that your pixel is growing. People call that feeding your, feeding your pixel with Pinterest, feeding your Facebook pixel. I like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, just to kind of bring it back to that attraction marketing concept too, Pinterest again is not social media. So there, it's not a place where you're going to be able to say, um, I'm just going to find people on Pinterest and I'm going to nurture them on Pinterest and I'm going to get to know them and engage with them on Pinterest. And then they're just going to give me money. Like that's not how it's going to work with Pinterest marketing. Mm -hmm. um, it actually can work for some people that way on Facebook, Instagram. And I get that. Um, I, I mean, I understand it. I don't know if I get it, but I understand it. I don't know if I, yeah. I don't, it's not for me, but some people do it that way. Um, so that one of the things I have to somehow sometimes let people, you know, be, just be really clear about is that that's not how Pinterest works. Just like that's not how Google works. You can't just nurture people on Google. You have no. to, use Google to get them to find you when they're searching for the solutions you offer. Yeah. Yeah. And then bring them into your world so that you can mm -hmm. extend a hand and say, hi, it's nice yeah. to meet you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Thank you, Jana, for like all of this information. And I don't know about you guys, but I know that I'm so interested in Pinterest because I'm all about efficiency and mm -hmm. one and done. And when Jana said yeah. you can set this up in a small amount of time, I was like, I knew that I had to have her. Um, <laughs> like, like, like my listeners need to hear all this of this information. But yeah. I want you to know that Jana has a course, a DIY course, you know, for those yeah. of you who are either haven't started with Pinterest or you're wondering, how do I even get started? Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's called Pinterest with purpose. And I created it specifically for online coaches, course creators, service providers. Mm -hmm. So there are, um, 
other people, other types of industries and businesses that do really well with Pinterest marketing, um, people who own Etsy stores and create products and people who um, mm -hmm. are really prolific food bloggers blogging, you know, three, four times a week and making money on ads and things like that. Um, but that is not who I wanted to teach Pinterest for. I wanted to teach coaches, service providers, how they can um, use Pinterest as an attraction marketing tool in their tool belt. Um, so I created the course specifically for that group to teach the methods that I had been uh, developing and testing and refining with my one-to-one -one clients for the last four years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, at that point when I built it for the first time, it was three years. I've updated it a few times, but um, so it's specifically for that group. Uh, if anyone's listening and you're not a coach or a course creator or a service provider, you know, you can message me and I'll make a recommendation for a course on Pinterest, but this course is specifically for that particular type of person, a, co a, a coach, a course creator, <laughs> a service provider, um, an infopreneur, if you will. Yeah. So yeah, and it's basically takes you through the entire strategic setup process that I use with my clients, everything from that boring keyword stuff that you got to do, <laughs> get over that hump, uh, to how to design the Pinterest pins that stop the scroll, what works really well on Pinterest for mm -hmm. graphics, um, get people over to your, you know, your content and your offers. Um, and you know, everything in between the things that I, you know, that I mentioned. Wonderful. So, and we'll yeah. make sure that, I mean, at least check out the, there'll be a link to, so that you can check out, um, a little bit more information about like the different modules and to see if it's a yeah. right fit. And then if you have any questions, feel free to, to reach out to Jana. That would be fantastic. Yeah. But um, she also has something, a, um, a free gift for anybody. Yeah, you want to tell yeah. us about that? Yeah. If you're just wanting to kind of dip your toe in um, and get started the fast way um, and not worry too much yet about the keyword strategy, but you do want to do a few things to kind of get the momentum going and get your profile and kind of claim your space on Pinterest so that when you're ready, um, you know, you can uh, really get the best benefit from it. Um, I have a checklist, which is um, a quick start checklist. So it gives you the five steps to take to just get your profile um, visually optimized and branded. Um, and so you can kind of claim your space and be official there. And uh, yeah, so you can grab that one. Um, and it's, it's my Pinterest checklist, quick start checklist. So it's at janaomedia.com forward slash Pinterest checklist, all one word, no dashes. And that um, and the, yeah. in the show notes as well. So that you oh, don't have perfect. to be like wondering, like, how do you spell yeah. that? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's amazing how many people misspell Pinterest actually. Um, now that you mentioned that, but Guilty yeah, of yeah. That. <laughs> I hear uh, pin, pin Pinterest a lot. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. And the, so that's, that's free. So it's a really great place to start. And um, yeah, it's just something that I have, cooked up for people who just want to, you know, get started the easy way and dip their toe in. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. This has been yeah. so valuable and yeah. lots of really good, um, good tips and things to think about when setting up your Pinterest and mm -hmm. how to optimize it and just make Pinterest work for you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you yeah. so much, you're, Anna. You're, for you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. This was fun. And I'll see you guys next time.